Before they begin, they have agreed to let John Taylor demonstrate once and for all everything he believes in by setting fire to a chair in what used to be someone's front room. Wish me luck as you wave me goodbye to the old. Rescue teams stand by. The unpredictable nature of fire could get the better of John and his cameraman, Paul. Right, I'm going to put my me, um, me face mask on now and my clothing. You must do this very carefully because you can't have any, any bit, part of your skin exposed at all because if you do, you'll get an immediate burn. OK. OK, we're ready to light the fire. OK, this is just an armchair fire. This will prove conclusively that it's the, the combustible gases that are on fire in the ceiling and not just the armchair. What we'll see is the fire develop in the armchair as it decomposes. It's like a, a candle. When you have a candle on fire, what is actually on fire? It's not the actual candle, it's the flammable vapours from the actual heat that's decomposing it. You see, they're beginning to slowly collect in the ceiling and they're getting darker and darker. The other thing is to dispel any theories of it's the chipboard lining. As you can see, the armchair is well away from any linings whatsoever. Again, you can see more and more combustible gases being given off now. And the speed of the fire will begin to develop and get rapider. Or even faster. OK? So we've got the lean flush over in the ceiling. What I'm going to do is go down and pick up a thermometer, a thermocouple reading that we've got wired up to two thermocouples. One in the ceiling and one at the floor level. And give you a comparison of the temperatures we're actually talking about. The reason we can sustain these temperatures is because of protective clothing we've got on and the firefighting branches and knowledge we've attained. Now you can see the smoke getting a bit darker and there's more of it because of a wider base. Also it's dropped to the floor and that's beginning to just smoulder away and melt the floorboard covering. Now it's getting darker in the ceiling, it's spreading across. You'll soon get the lean flash over. See how the flames are actually getting higher? Because they're burning through the smoke because now they are actually flammable with combustible gases. This is definitely the smoke that's on fire. It's well away from the armchair, those flames. It's nothing to do with it. And when the flames are in the ceiling, how can that possibly be the armchair on fire? Now the, the back of the armchair is decomposing. We're getting a darker smoke layer in the ceiling. It's beginning to roll. And you'll see the flames get higher and higher. And the temperature will increase tremendously. We still haven't reached lean flash over yet. We're beginning to get the flames higher and higher. And the smoke layer is banking down. There's a lot of energy here and it's getting quite warm. OK. We're still looking for that lean flash over in the ceiling yet. The gas is still out of the flash point in the ceiling. But obviously the heat going transmitting through is getting warmer and warmer and making them more and more flammable. Once they reach the flash point, it will go over the ceiling. OK, I'm going to go down now to look at the temperature. There you have the lean flash over in the ceiling. And what you've got is a 1,000 degrees C in the ceiling and about 300 degrees C at floor at time. Now I have to go out, Paul. Above John's head, the gases have reached the flash point and ignited. As John and Paul crawl on their bellies out into the corridor, the sudden rise in heat and pressure caused the windows to shatter. Paul, you OK? Did you see how quickly those flames came down then? Yeah, we were actually in the fire. The fire's in the ceiling and it's coming out the doorway now. We close the door and look at the fire in the room. Suddenly, the observation window cut into the wall for the camera starts to fail. Air pours okay. into the room. Be careful, Peter, watch this. What's happened here is that's melted. Now we'll get the air into the fire. And then we'll get air in there. Peter, do you want to open that and take it? Okay. Do you want 
time John lit the fire, it took just over five minutes to destroy the room. He'd have probably died in three without survival equipment. But by attacking the gases and not the seat of the fire, the Swedish fire brigade put it out in seconds. High pressure spray of water creates an area of low pressure behind it, like a tube train leaving a station. Air rushes in to equalize the difference. Point the spray out of the window and the smoke follows. As you can see, we've had a definite lean flashover in the ceiling, and in this instance, it's burnt down to halfway in the door. Now, this isn't normal. Normally, it would only be to the top part of the door before the fire in the ceiling would be extinguished due to the overcarburation. That is too much smoke in the room and using up the oxygen. The reason in this particular instance it was a true reflection, we had a plastic view window to film it, and unfortunately, the seal went and we got more air in than we should have done. And the other thing to remember it, for people uh, who have fires in their home, if the, if the doors open at night and you, this happens, you saw the extent of the fire and how quickly it happens and it would go up the staircase. So you must close your doors at night to the living rooms if you can. Always remember close your door and it bottles up the fire until the firefighters get there to tackle it. The other thing is don't ever open the door. You saw what happened when the door was opened. Don't ever open the door because it will just have the backdraft and it'll take you.